The final topic that we're going to cover in this module is how to get started using ASP.NET Web Forms. Up to this point, you've seen how to get Visual Studio Web Developer Express installed, how to create projects, and how they compile, but we really haven't built much of anything to this point. Now, we haven't learned about server controls or data access technologies at this point, so I'm going to keep it very, very basic, but it'll help you get started. So let's go ahead and jump in. So we've already seen how to create projects. So I'm going to come in and create a new project. And we'll select web, ASP.NET web application. Now what I'm going to do though is I don't want to start with the default website that you've already seen. I'm going to come down and do an empty web application and add a page by default and kind of work with that page. So we'll come down and let's go ahead and call this first demo website. All right, so that creates a very, very simple and pretty much empty web application project. In fact, all we have is a configuration file that allows us to put some of the configuration for our ASP.NET web application. Now, we're not going to need that in this particular demo. What I am going to do, though, is right click on my project and we're going to do Add New Item. Now the item I'm going to add is a web form. So let's go ahead and call it default.aspx, since that's the standard for your home page in ASP.NET websites. Now you can name it whatever you want, though. That's what I like to do. Now let's build a really simple form from here. So I'm going to switch over to Design View. And in Design View, I'm going to leverage our toolbox to drag on some of the different controls that you see here. Now these are server controls. I'll introduce server controls officially and talk about several of these later in a future module in this video series. But for now, we're going to build something very, very basic to capture some form data, have a way for the user to input it, click a button, and then work with it from there. So I'm going to go in and drag on, first of all, a text box, then a button, and then a label. So let's say we'd like to capture the user's name. So we'll type name. I'll then come in and drag on a text box. Now the text box is currently text box 1. Let's go ahead and right click and go to properties and we'll go up to the top and change the ID to something a little bit better. I'm just going to call it name text box. And then I'll come in, go ahead and hit enter to give us a little space. I'm going to hit that twice. Scroll on up and let's drag on a button control. We'll also go to the properties and we'll change the text property to submit. And that'll update it. Now, keep in mind that everything I'm doing here, although it's visual, if you're someone who really doesn't like to do it visually, everything can be done in source mode if you'd like. We can type in these controls directly or I can even do split view mode where I can type it in plus see what I'm doing as I type. And you'll notice as I highlight the different controls, it actually highlights those in the designer. So it makes it really easy and nice to work with. Now coming on back over, let's say that once they submit this, we'd like to write out what they type for the name. And we want to go ahead and write that out to somewhere down here below the button, to a label. So I'm going to drag on a label. We'll right click, go to properties. We're already there. And I'm going to take out the text. We don't want to show anything when this first loads. We only want to show something after they've submitted something. So we'll come up to the ID. Let's give this a name of output label. That'll be the name or ID for it. And you can see right now it shows that, but because you see the square brackets around it, it's not going to render it at runtime. So you won't actually see output label. That's just showing us what the name is. All right, so this is probably the world's most simple form that we can build. But I'm going to show you how easy it is in ASP.NET Web Forms, especially if you're brand new to this framework, to get started and make it so the user can type in something, we can click the button and automatically update this label with just a very minimal amount of code. Now to do that, and to start this process, I'm going to double click on my button. Now what that makes is an event handler. And this event handler called button one click is what will get called when they click the button. So what will happen is, inside of the source, you'll notice that we have this form tag. And of course, as with standard web technologies, when you click an input type equals button or an input type equals submit, 
we can actually go in and submit the form. It's going to post back. Now, some of you may be used to actually having an action up here, and that action may be a different page. Well, in ASP.NET, by default, whenever you post back, it's going to post back to the same page. And you don't have to worry about much there. You'll see the plumbing is very, very simple on your end as a developer. In fact, it's going to do all the heavy lifting for us. But it's going to make it more like a desktop development model, meaning that we can double click on the button, we get an event handler. Behind the scenes, that's using standard web technologies to redirect and detect that the button was clicked, the form was posted back, and then .NET will take care of invoking this button one click event handler method. Now inside of here, we can grab the text box text and assign it to the labels text. So we'll come in and we'll say output label dot text equals and now we can go to name text box dot text and that'll simply go in grab the value of the text box and assign it to the text of the output label now you notice how simple that is I didn't have to go into the request variables I didn't have to check the form posted back uh, data you know update the or grab the query string value or anything like that I simply go to the control grab that go to the property of the control I want to get and then assign it to the other control. Now what will happen here is these controls will now render the HTML back and we'll see the posted back screen. So it's all going to stay on default.aspx in this case because that's how it works by default. Alright, so we're pretty much ready to go. So let's go back to the Solution Explorer. Let's make sure that we build OK. So I'll right click on it. Looks like we get one succeeded. So that's a good step. Now we can go ahead and right click on default ASPX. We can say view in browser. And this will pop open our browser and render our form. Now remember, let's go back before I go any further, that I drug on a text box control. You'll see this has a little bit of a different thing that you might be used to if you're doing pure HTML. This is called a server control, if you see ASP colon. We also have the button I drug on and the label. Now, remember what you see there because when I go look in this in the browser, let's view source and see what's rendered. So let's refresh here. Here's my text box, here's my button. And what we'll do is right click and we'll go to view source. Now, if we scroll on down, you'll notice I don't have that ASP text box or the ASP button or the label. It now rendered standards compliant HTML. So the control that I drug on is just a friendly way to work with text boxes and buttons and many, many other things that ASP.NET supports out of the box. You'll notice it actually made the ID and the name the same as what I gave it on the server side. Same for the button. We didn't rename it, so it called it button1. And then for the label, it actually output a span tag. But the span tag doesn't have anything inside of it because I took out that text earlier. So that's one of the nice things about ASP.NET Web Forms is that there's some very sophisticated controls like the grid view or the details view that we'll talk about in later sections of this video course. They take care of rendering the HTML for you so that you can just focus on your application, the business logic, and get that UI working properly. So now that you've seen what's generated here, let's go ahead and run it. So we'll just enter my name, we'll do Dan Walleen, hit submit and you can see it echoes that back to our label. Very, very simple. Now there is a postback operation occurring. It's going to be very fast, but uh, it does happen behind the scenes. And if we go now look at the source, what happened is on the server side, we updated the label. And let me just go back to the source here. So we had that label. When it was posted back, we took the value of the text box and updated the text of the label. Well, coming back in to our source, you'll see the span now has the name inside of it. So ASP.NET automatically detected the post back, handled that, and then went in and updated uh, the label control, which then outputs this span tag. So very, very simple to get started with. So that's an example of building a very basic kind of starter ASP.NET Web Forms application. And as we move forward in this video series, we'll be doing more and more sophisticated things. We'll talk about data access, how to get data from databases into our apps, and show many of the other server controls that are available in the framework. In this module, we've talked about what is the .NET framework and what does it mean to you as a software developer. 
Specifically, what does it mean to you as an ASP.NET Web Forms developer? From there, I introduced the Web Platform Installer and showed you how it makes it really easy to install not only Visual Studio Web Developer Express, which will help you get going, but also other ASP.NET Web Forms projects that are out there, including open source projects. It's a really nice one-click type way to get something installed without having to go find it out on the web somewhere. Once we got Visual Studio installed, I walked you through the interface and then we walked into how do you create different types of projects and discussed ASP.NET Web Forms website projects versus web application projects. And from there I explained the compilation models. As a review, website projects don't create a DLL. You have to copy the source code files by default over to your target server. Whereas with the web application projects, in that particular case, we do get a DLL and you need to do an explicit build. That DLL, along with the ASPX and other supporting files such as script and CSS files, need to be copied over to your target server. Once we discussed that, we walked through a basic getting started type of ASP.NET Web Forms application, showed a little bit about the postback model and how to handle basic events. So that's a wrap up for this first module to help get you started and introduce you to ASP.NET Web Forms development.